very much to do with the classical training that we talked about mm. earlier, because it just meant my range was quite big from a very early age, and also the kind of cocky confidence that you followed me around. Like, that's taken a few more <laughs> years. Um, and also, there aren't that many uh, people from outer space to be cast in other productions. <laughs> so, so Leela wasn't didn't have the same, you know, I, I didn't come from Earth, even though I was, was an Earthling. I did have that kind of otherworldly, slightly otherworldly quality, so I don't think there was any danger of, of typecasting. And it did open a lot of doors for theatre for me, a lot of doors. Oh, I was just thinking more of like, you didn't go down the Bond Girl route, or...? No, sadly, no, kind of, I'm <laughs> directing, a, I'm directing a play um, uh, about Ian Fleming at the moment, interestingly. Um, and I will be doing the voice, the voice on that, the soundscape on that. But that's as near as I'll ever get to being a bond girl. Couple of am. Do you know why he called it M? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, M for mother. Yeah. Interesting. Who said that? I want you on my pub quiz team. <laughs> 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 Can I just say, uh, all of us are always thinking about him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, because my father, who is no longer uh, with me, that was the one time that we shared during the week, but apparently we were watching it for two different reasons. <laughs> 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 um, as far as the costumes concerned, I haven't got the first one, but I have got the second. I did make the second <laughs> tennis outfit. Um, and it's just there for a rainy day, either when I completely run out of money or some charity is desperately in need of some money, I will sell it, but I do still have that. My niece, who looks very like I used to, has worn it to a couple of fancy dress parties. <laughs> <laughs> well, it may well suit you soon, because we're looking at keeping fit and whatever, and you'll think of a personal trainer, a little bit of a present for your birthday. I am, yes. My, my darling friend, I'm not sure whether to thank her or hit her, bought me a personal trainer for my 60th. So both my sons are personal trainers, and they both tried to train me, but basically, and this, this is their words, not mine, you have to either fancy or be frightened of your personal trainer. Well, if they're your sons, that's just a bit weird. <laughs> so I, I have this other man who I'm told is gorgeous and will make me laugh, so we'll see. I need to come and cover this to make sure you know, okay. all is outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you photos. Then. You're on. <laughs> oh, you've got, it's going to have a harem at this rate. Anybody else coming? <laughs> Who else has got, has anyone had a fitness trainer? <laughs> Nothing to go by yet, so we need you to come back and tell us <laughs> right, if yeah, it yeah, actually works. Like How do you manage, because you're such a busy person, if you to check out any website, or you love blogging, uh, you do a regular blog, we'll talk more about that. Um, but you're so busy, you're producing, you're directing, you're writing, you're touring. Um, so how do you fit it all in? How do you manage I your day? I don't know. Do you know the main problem is organising the dog? <laughs> it, honestly, it, that's the, I think that's probably where all the anxiety focuses. But I hate leaving him. Um, and I've got three brilliant dog walkers who he absolutely adores, and I have a house with them. It's a fortune to take care of this dog, who isn't mine anyway. It belongs to the boys, but they left home and left the dog behind. <laughs> you know, That's kids for you. Yes. <laughs> so, bless him. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I did an interview for, there's, there's a book coming out about Tenko, and, you know, how, how it, uh, all the rehearsal and episode by episode and what we thought of each other and any little anecdotes and all that. And, um, he, he was saying how um, Philip Urquhart had arranged to meet him in the National Library and someone else had arranged to meet him in the club and somebody else had arranged. And I'd arranged to meet him at Charing Cross Hotel because it's like I get out of the station into the hotel. And I said, oh, it's interesting, isn't it, about how, where, where they've decided to meet you? He said, yes, it says a lot about the woman. And I went, well, what does this say about me? And he went, that you're efficient. So I thought, well, but he probably got it. <laughs> Everything that Shelley's just saying. What do you need to relax? Uh, <laughs> play Scrabble online. Oh. Um, <laughs> I absolutely love it. Because I'm dyslexic, I can check all the spelling. So I get to play all those games that I can't play on the on the board. And I also walk. I walk a lot. 
Surprising how many people who are dyslexic actually um, get into acting as well. Yes. It's an awful lot, aren't there? I'll tell you another statistic. Um, I'll tell you three statistics, which I think is fascinating. 11% of uh, Britain is dyslexic. 40% of self-made millionaires are dyslexic. That's interesting. Mm. You just think of that 85% of male prisoners are dyslexic. So there's something very interesting about dyslexia that it absolutely needs to be addressed. If anybody here has a problem and with anybody who has a problem, Ron Davis is the person to speak of. He's written a book called The Gift of Dyslexia and he views it absolutely as a positive and it's, and it's turned my youngest son's life around completely. Five days intensive, quite expensive training on a one-on-one -on -one basis and it's never a problem again. I really mean that. Gosh. Because not too long ago, some schools, and I know there are various in Swindon, would actually not even acknowledge the word dyslexia, um, and it was not actually in their vocabulary, which caused a lot of problems for young people. And you, and you go, I've had teachers say that, do not believe in this, that it does not exist. You haven't got it, you don't know <laughs> what it's like, it's terrible. So how do you manage with things like learning your lines? Um, I put it on tape. I don't have problems reading. I have a, absolutely no sense of direction, and I absolutely cannot spell. But I don't have any problems sight reading. So dyslexia has become this kind of bucket that, that anybody with any kind of learning difficulty has been kind of lumped with this label, which doesn't really mean anything, but there are common denominators. Um, which is, if it, am I boring, or can I do it? Okay. No, so they still OK, what a dyslexic thing. brain does, this is why dyslexics make brilliant architects. What a dyslexic brain does, if, I, if, if a, a so-called normal brain looks at this, these flowers, they'll see it from the front, from the back, up, down, in their head, and they'll then take a kind of photograph of how it should look. A dyslexic brain travels all over it and can take 34 different pictures of it. and and. You know, this is, this is why it kind of sometimes verges on autism, they can turn around and draw it again, because they've got this imprint in their head, mm -hmm. and why they're great architects, because they can see the entire building and solve all the problems within the building, rather than just seeing one bit of architecture. So, if they're looking at letters like ABC, can you imagine that, you know, tiny little three, four-year-old brain taking 34 different pictures. Mm -hmm. After 20 minutes, they're exhausted, so they then get diagnosed with being attention deficit disorder, and they're not. It's just that they've got too much information. They're, they're overloaded. They just need a break. They just need, no, need to be known yeah. how to be treated, yes, how exactly. to work with them. Exactly. And recognised early so you can do something about it. Completely. And just teach them in a, in a different way. Just absolutely come and see different way. The best thing of all is to see someone who has achieved, isn't it? Because you realise what you can do, yeah. which is the biggest inspiration of all, isn't it? Well, there's a huge list of people. You know, Einstein, you know, there's just a huge list of people that, that have achieved and, and visualised wonderful things. Maybe. And you've done it. <coughs> we sort of skipped over the EastEnders a little bit, didn't we? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, I know there are a few fans. <laughs> Indeed. An absolute I haven't seen it recently at all, but I can't. Yeah, I think it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about English soaps is that they're, they're very, they can be very depressing. And American soaps are all to do with kind of achieving and money and blah, blah, blah. And English soaps are to do with kind of being all, lots of victims in one day. Mm -hmm. I've just had a screen test for Amadeo, I'll know tomorrow whether I'm going to watch Amadeo. Got one happy fan here. To play um, Jay's mum. Is that going to be a long-term um, role? I think they're going to bring a simple one story, and then um, if they like it, they'll keep it going. In addition to some more filming you've done recently, looking forward, Doc Martin. Oh. Yeah. Very popular <laughs> program, isn't it? From hell. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, a little bit of sadism here, a little bit sadistic, because uh, you said, uh, looking at you, that it's one of the um, uh, most enjoyable things you're doing. Yeah. But at the same role, you're going to be a sadistic kind of mother-in-law from hell, so <laughs> it's a good combination so of the two. It's so much fun to play. I mean, it just verges on the outside. You know, she chain smokes, she puts alcohol in the baby's bottles, <laughs> <laughs> and then pretends she's just brilliant, she can get the baby to sleep. 
so it's and we loathe Martin Coombs and I loathe each other on side. But it's just such fun. It's such fun to play. Much nicer than sort of you know the Scooby Doo shoes, isn't it? But that's where variety comes in. Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant, isn't it, to be yeah. able to do that? Yeah. But he's happy, isn't he? Martin, oh, sorry, lady at the back. Yes, um, you just mentioned smoking. Yes. And obviously, since all the recent legislation with regard to smoking in the workplace, I've noticed on television and on stage. Actors and actresses are still expected to, to smoke. Yeah. Do you use one of these special funny things that pretend to be cigarettes, or do you actually have to light up? On stage, I use the electric one, right? Uh, which, if you if you blow it rather than suck it, you get a little bit of yeah. And it also lights up in the dark. It's very it's good. Yeah. And on uh, camera, I use herbal cigarettes. But I was 40 a day in my youth. That's how we all got so skinny on Tenko. <laughs> <laughs> what made you stop? I got pregnant. So oh, there you go. Can't do it then, can you? And then you stopped for good. <laughs> yeah. Never been tempted since? Oh, I've kind of flirted with it when I've had too much to drink, but not, not, not really, no. Never went back like that, no. What was I thinking? You got smoked or something? So would you call yourself a smoker in recovery, or would you say that? Yeah, I, actually, if I could smoke, um, uh, just relax, you know, when I'm out socially, yeah. then I still have a smoke in the day. Right. But I know I couldn't. I've never put one to the night in the so I would go straight to the pocket. Well, it's the hardest thing. Yeah. You know, I was doing a, a series called The Omega Factor in 1790. Um, it was the first time I tried to give up. And on uh, episode eight, myself and Jimmy Hazelby and John Carlyle, we all decided to give up together. And uh, suddenly, if you watch the series, in episode eight, we're all suddenly screaming at each other. This is this nice, gentle work. Who else is a smoker? Not too many. One. Oh. Oh. Percentages are going down, aren't they, when you go into the public? Yeah. They are actually going down. What do you think of um, the little oases that we now build outside our pubs and clubs, don't we? And you get a, no matter what the weather, pouring down with rain, that they'll stand there in the tiniest little bit of shelter yeah. to have the cigarette. I still believe they should have smokers in. You know, it's a tiny choice. Uh, I don't believe that's what I hate, you know, to so even when I smoke. But I do believe they should have sex in class. The worst thing in the world is driving by and seeing outside offices and outside the bank, they've got to come out and have a quick bang. Um, if they only had a section for smokers only, then I think, well, you know, seriously, what was the demand you had? A pint and a pint, didn't you? A working class man, that was his, at the end of the day, with a pint and a pint. And I honestly got nothing against that. I packed it because they were too expensive. Mm -hmm. That's not eight to two <laughs> I've got um, I do have one more to just split back to Doctor Who. Did anybody I'm so embarrassed by this, I can't believe I mentioned it. I'm oh we like this. Anybody see the okay? Yes. Um, I got I got so bullied into doing the science question. For those of you that didn't see it, I think it was extremely well, except for me, it was up for Lucy. You had Colin Baker, um, uh, John Leeson, Katie Manning, me, and, oh, you know, where's the kill? Thank you. <laughs> We're on the film. They all did really, really, really well. And then it got to, and before the show, Barry, you know, lovely Barry. Mm -hmm. I know, he's gone, oh, that's such a doctor, he's having so much it. Okay, he's so cute in the it's lovely. Anyway, he'd been very sweet to me. So when they said, you're doing stuff, well, actually, Colin completely bullied me into doing the science. But, you know, I've got four O levels. I can't, I know, anyway, I don't even know what an analgesic is. So, um, so I did, so I did, they said, who do you want? I said, Barry, and they went, lovely. Barry was delighted. Nobody told me I had a double person in Cambridge in science. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, our team did so well. Um, we all uh, were late for our flight home from Glasgow, which is where we were filming it. So there was Colin, 
John, me and Katie, Fraser was staying up there. So we get to the airport and they're calling our flight. Roger and I, will you please get like that?